The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, says 205 critical security assets, corporate facilities and private property were burnt or vandalized during the NSAT protest. During a virtual conference with senior police officers on Friday, the IGP said statistics collated between October 11th, when the protest assumed a national dimension, and October 27th, indicated that 14 states recorded major violence. The state's name include Lagos, Edo, Delta, Oyo, Kano, Plateau, Oshu, Ondo, Ogun, Rivers, Abia, Imo, Ikiti, and the Federal Capital Territory. The police boss said 71 public warehouses and 248 privately owned stores were looted. He said there are 51 civilian fatalities with 37 injured and 22 policemen were murdered with 26 others injured during the protest. Adamu said that 10 firearms, including eight AK-47 rifles, carted away during attacks on police stations and a locally made pistol has been recovered. We're now being joined by Dennis Amatri, former Assistant Director of the Department of State Services, DSS. Thank you very much for joining us. Good afternoon. What's the implication of this figure, coupled with the latest directive that police officers should defend themselves? I think um, the Inspector General is um, putting the cart before the horse. I can imagine that uh, they have uh, a problem of morale. Uh, the police right now have a low morale, and um, a lot of them are really scared of going, getting into the, into, the, into the streets. But at the same time, uh, the best thing for us to do now is to start bending the fences. There is need for them, uh, the police and the people to be talking all the way down to the local government areas, where we sit down, we ask the police what you know they can do for us, what we want, and then the police could tell us their own capabilities of what they can do. Um, going out to defend themselves, that means you're going to give them guns again, and then when they get to the streets, if anybody tries to even abuse them, then they will start firing again. I think that will bring us back to what we are trying to get away from. And we've noticed the conspicuous absence of police officers on our roads now. Uh, is the sad incidence now a license, you know, for, for them to, you know, for dereliction of duty, so to speak? Yeah, in a way, because they are abandoning their duties by uh, leaving the streets. And then, of course, uh, you find out that people are just driving anyhow. People are taking one way, uh, they don't obey street lights anymore. Uh, all kinds of things are happening right now. Um, maybe it's a way of, of the police showing that, uh, yes, this is what we are doing. This is our, uh, uh, our utility in society that we, we, we can do. But um, then they are leaving their duties uh, uh, you know, to nobody. Uh, I think the best thing for them to do is to come back. But before they come back, there should be a kind of dialogue and of course, I think this is a golden opportunity for the police to do all kinds of reforms that they are supposed to be doing at this time. And the burning of police stations, killing of these officers, you know, some of them injured, it agreed it can be demoralizing. But what can be done to motivate the police officers to get back on their job? A lot of things have been proposed already. Salary increase, um, all kinds of things, but again, I believe strongly that, like I said, this is the golden opportunity for the police. You know, they can do their reforms now. They can do their reforms now. They can decide to tell them, okay, we are giving you enough money to go and rent your houses among the people. Go and live in town. You don't have to stay in these barracks that are looking terrible. You know, um, do something. It's not uh, trying to maintain the old structures and then, of course, asking them to come out. It, it, it's very demoralizing. And I think uh, the dialogue is very, very important. Dialogue, because we need to talk with the police. Are they going to be our police or they are going to be their police against us? That, that is, that is, that, that's, uh, 
uh, police is your friend uh, attitude you have to come out now you know based on what you said there's now a disconnect between the agitators uh, agitators and the police officers that they are purportedly fighting for. And you've been emphasizing uh, the importance of dialogue throughout this conversation, but how else can this trust deficit be amended? Ah, uh, well, you know, the trust deficit that exists between the police and the Nigerian public has taken years, decades, you know, since independence. And um, I think the police on their own should start working on that. Because the police was not created to take care of the people. They were not created to service anybody. They were created to protect the colonial masters. And when the colonial masters left, the, the new masters are whom they are taking care of now. That's the politicians. You know, the, the IG has done very well by withdrawing the Bopols from all the politicians that they are following up and down. But... I think you should be serious about it because I can see that they are still there. They are still with those people. If the, if the politicians are looking for uh, protection, they should go to private security. They should go to private security and do that. There are people that are warranted by law, by constitution to be taken care of. And that's the president, vice president, uh, senate president, uh, speaker, uh, the chief judge and some very important ministers and their foreign heads, uh, diplomatic uh, missions, not politicians or local government chairmen. Uh, state governors will be taken care of too, but the, the, you know, we have bastardized it in such a way that if uh, a politician is not with a poll, it looks like uh, he has lost his uh, power, you know, and that's not how it's supposed to be. Thank you very much for your thoughts on the news. Thank you very much for having me.